Well, happy Friday night, everybody, and we're back at it. It's dumping snow right now. We got a good northeast wind going, but fortunately, I left the tarp running it's up, and uh, we've got part of a wall sitting there, so wind inside here is not too bad. It's just damn cold out, so we're going to get on uh, cutting this top plate up tonight, try to get the joinery cut in it. Um, try not to let parts of my body freeze and fall off on me that I kind of want or need anyway. So, anyway, hope you folks enjoy it. Stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it all. Okay, everybody, let's get this thing cut. So, what I like to do, and we're going to work on the scarf first on this. It's probably all we're going to get done tonight because I'm doing it the long, hard way. <clears throat> Normally with these, like my mismatched gloves, I lose gloves terribly, so I find whatever I can in the glove bag in the house. <clears throat> but anyway, typically what I like to do with these, I like to put them in the sawmill and make the long cut. It saves you hours, hours on the, on the cutting of this. But this is fine the way to do it too. Being this is a 10 by 10, we're going to have two inches in the middle that we're going to have to cut by hand. Not a big deal. Also, this blade cuts uh, has a cut depth of 3 and 7 eighths inches. So we're going to have to cut down a couple inches deeper into that as well to finish the cut off. So we have three cuts on this end that we can make right now without rolling this thing over. I have one right here, I have one here, and I have one here. Now our tenon is actually going to be on the bottom side. It's going to be from this point down. It's going to be from this point to this point. So they're not bad to do. It's pretty really simple scarf joints to cut and lay out so we're going to get this cut see how long this takes us i'll give you a time on it and uh, we're just going to go from there and have at it
Hopefully you can hear me okay over the tarps blowing around. So there's another scarf joint in the works, all done. Um, pretty well all cleaned up, so we get a couple mortises and some housing cuts and cutting that, then we're going to put it up. So something I want to cover, we have covered it before in the past quite a few times, but I'm getting a lot of questions. I've even been, uh, how shall I say, trolled a little bit because I said it over in a Pure Living for Life video and somebody took umbrage with it. Well, what are you going to do? That does happen. So anyway, scarf joint placement. We talked about it a little bit in the layout video and I feel maybe I need to explain that a little bit better because I am getting a, a decent amount of questions on it. Um, it's dealing with scarf joints placed over with the wall posts coming up in the center of the scarf joints. There are some scarf joints that are made for that, but traditionally that is not how it's done. From an engineering principle of the frames and the structure types, there's a few things that, some forces in there that you really need to take into account if you are going to do it that way. The first thing is going to be your greatest moment of pressure against the bottom the thrust lifting up on that plate is going to be above the wall posts. Whether that be from movement of foundation, whether that be from plate sagging a little bit over time, because that will happen, it puts that's where it puts the most stress on that scarf joint in terms of where the frame <coughs> actually bends and stuff like that. The other part of that, somebody had mentioned a rafter being cut, a principal rafter being cut and set over top of that on top of the post, which is where your big principal rafters would go if you're using the big timbered rafters and then running purlins across. Um, I'm not using those rafters here because it makes for an extremely, extremely heavy roofing system. And if you look at a lot of really old frames, you're going to see very large spans with 3 by 5 white pine or whatever, sometimes three foot on centered small rafters with a plank roof built around here which we have a 50 pound per square foot snow load but they've held up. You go in and you see some of the older frames that have the big principal rafters on them and a lot of times the roofing systems on those fail under their own weight over time. I'm not saying it can't be done, I'm, don't, don't get me wrong, a lot of people, I love to look myself, I just don't practice that. and you got to keep in mind if you're going to build one like that your timber sizes are going to be huge for that roof. It's going to be a lot of weight. You have to take that into consideration. It can be done but if you're having this thing engineered make sure all that's being accounted for in the engineering. Now the comment I had earlier this evening about that was it would seem logical that if you place a rafter over top of the center of that scarf joint over top of a wall post that that rafter would help hold that scarf joint down and in place together. You may get a little bit of that, but you have to remember rafters have thrust, so as you put that frame out, the gravity and the weight of the roof is going to want to do this over time. So that's going to that's going to put a sheer it's going to put a sheer load on that scarf joint and you don't want that. Those scarfs aren't designed for that. I'm sure there are some scarfs that you can fine that would be good for that but also keep in mind if you're using the big principal drafters if you're not doing just a standard bird's mouth in them you actually have to cut joinery into that scarf itself for those big rafters and it's usually pretty good size joinery for those rafters to sit in there right so again I'm not saying it can't be done because a lot of a lot of the newer frames you see out there do get built that get built that way but Traditionally, it's not quite the proper way of doing it. Now, maybe with modern engineering principles and things like that, maybe they've discovered things that the old timers didn't know, which is highly possible. With computers and everything else these days, there's a lot more possibilities than there used to be. But from the way I look at it, from the standpoint of actually designing or engineering a frame, and I'm certainly not an engineer, I just have spent many, many years reading up on this whatever I can find on it for information wise. Um, I think it's important to know, you know, I get a lot of viewers that are going to be building frames themselves. And when I see questions like that, I really strongly feel they need to be addressed because I can't stress enough 
that you have to think of every load that's going to be on each joint when you're thinking this out. Now, I'm not saying you need an engineer. I advise it. I'm not saying you do need it. I mean, a lot of good common sense practices studying things out, and you'll figure it out just fine. But when you're going to design these frames, you have to think of every single load and try to foresee every load that's going to go on every joint. Tie beams are massive. I have tie beams that span 28 feet here with a scarf in the middle. They're 10 by 16s. I have a massive 2.5 inch by 16 inch tenon on those going into a housing in the side of the wall posts. And I have three ash 1 inch pegs through that joint. The reason for that is you have a lot of tension on that joint because of the rafter thrust. So naturally as the roof settles in, it naturally wants to push against the wall plates and push them out. That's why your, your scarf joints and your tie beams are always in tension. That's not a compression load, it's a purely a tension load. They're going to want to try to pull apart as these walls want to push out naturally. So if you're designing your own frame, I'm not going to tell you not to do it and I'm not going to say you shouldn't do it. That's up to you whether you feel comfortable to do that, but you really have to think about those loads. Every joint you have to figure out what's the load going to be on that joint. You know, if you cut a rafter housing at three quarters of an inch thick, how long before that thing fails because it, the timber shrunk up because you built with green timber? There are things like that. I mean, it's just so many things that you have to take into consideration. You have to plan each joint carefully before you do it. So when it comes to the scarf joints, I stick with the traditional methodology of putting those on. You don't center them above a wall post. You put it to one side, and then you have a brace comes up on the bottom half of the scarf that does help support that scarf. Even though a brace isn't designed to really support a load like that, they're designed to resist racking, it still helps structurally. Now, that's why I don't place them over the center of a wall post. Plain and simple, most of them are not designed for that. And the ones I do normally see over a wall post, I kind of have to shake my head a little bit because most of the time they're really short and they got a big tenon that goes up through the middle of both of them, so you're taking a lot of meat out of the middle of that joint to begin with. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not an engineer, but to my way of thinking, looking at it, doesn't seem quite right. But anyway, enough of that. We've harped on that through many videos, and as I get those questions, I will continue to address them. You know, we'll, we'll try to do it in such a way that it's understandable. But uh, anyway, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. I'm going to go in. I'm going to edit this thing. Happy Friday night. It's almost Christmas, so... I'm going to go spend a little time with the family tonight. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.